It's time for the Gizwiz with Mad's Maddest Writer, Dick D. Bartolo. This is episode 1640, recorded on Thursday, September 14th, 2017. Great expectations. On this episode of the Gizwiz, we have some gadgets that are good for the whole family. Mostly for the parents to buy for their kids. Also, some gadgets that you suggested that I buy and I try them and they're fantastic. You may call them eggtastic. Not correctly. And a gadget from the warehouse. All next on The Gizwiz! It's the same dumb show with Dickie D and OMG chat on your PC. It's time for the Gizwiz because gadgets are his business. They've got a gizmo sickness, geek disease. Under pathology, rows and rows of USBs, growing blue and LEDs. Get ready for the Gizwiz now. Now! Now! And here he is, the man with encyclopedic knowledge about all gadgets, Dick D. Bartolo. How you doing, Dickie D? I'm doing good, sir, and you? I'm doing well myself. Doing great. Just got back from um, seeing, I got to meet J Jimmy Carter. Actually, I didn't get to meet him. I got to be in the same room as Jimmy Carter. Uh, in, well, he was he was physically there. He was physically there. Yeah, I took a. So you know, I've been. I've maybe. You yes, you're remember. doing libraries of uh, presidential libraries and and all sorts of stuff. I, I we're, I'm now over halfway done with all the presidential libraries. Still need to hit a few in California. Still need to hit a few up in the um, uh, New England area. And then funny enough, how, how many are how many are there all together? Oh gosh, I think they're. Oh, you put me on the spot. I, I believe twelve. 12? Oh, oh, okay. Oh, so not every, not every president no. had a... Oh, no, okay. starting out at Hoover. Um, okay. So what number was Hoover? I forget. Subtract that. Um, and then there isn't one for Obama yet. Um, oh. And yeah, so uh, there's that many. I can't think of the presidential numbers or do math. Oh, no, that, that's enough. okay. I, I just thought there was one for every president. I was no, gonna say, not yet. Wow, no, that's a lot of libraries. No, what, what happened was um, that after Hoover, they wanted a place to put all the artifacts and, and all the papers and things like that. There are 15, says Gizwiz fan. Thank you. Um, oh, good. And, uh, and so they created the library system. Um, every library so far has been part of the uh, National Park foundation except for obama's and i'm i'm really worried about what obama's library is going to be like because it's been so nice that they're all integrated in one system and how i i bought a foundation family membership at one and they work at the other so i don't i don't know what's going to happen with obama's i'm worried um also it seems weird that like on the surface it not being part of the um national system doesn't seem that weird it's basically going to be privately owned but it does seem weird when you think about all the artifacts seem like they should be public property yes yeah absolutely private property so i'm very confused what's going to happen with obama's presidential library but um so i uh, had a great time went to the uh carter center and the car and jimmy carter library it's uh fantastic it's really in a great location in atlanta and Irma hit, and everything got canceled. It was terrifying because... Were you I, in the library when it happened? No, luckily, so it hit um, around two, you know, Tuesday-ish. Yes. And um, uh, we were really, really, really... Actually, no, it hit around Monday, Saturday, Sunday to Monday-ish. And it was basically finished by Tuesday. And we were really worried. I went with two other friends that they were going to cancel the town hall and, because they had canceled all sorts of other things. The libraries closed down. We tried to go to Plains, Georgia, where Jimmy Carter's from, and all the exhibits there were closed down, which was a bummer because it was a two and a half hour yeah. drive. Um, oh my gosh. So everything started closing down because Irma and everyone was, everything was saying, hey, we're closed because of the storm. And, and understandably, you don't want your employees to be stuck on, or put in danger going to work. Uh, you want them to stay at home and, and be safe. Um, yeah, no. but it was, it was like, oh no, you know, we hope that everything is, is going to work out. It ended up working out just fine. The town hall was on 
a Tuesday and at night and it really everything had passed by that time. And so they didn't cancel the town hall. So I was in a room with, with uh, I would say maybe 100 to 200 people. And uh, Jimmy Carter was there and he, and he talked about his foundation and what the foundation has been doing. And then he took questions and answers from the audience. And uh, they were really good questions. I mean, that audience was on point with the questions they asked about you know, current events, what he thought about, you know, the Trump candidacy and, and presidency and uh, asking about current, you know, current situations and how, you know, they would handle it or advice they would give. And it was really, really fascinating. It was just a fascinating night. Um, and, uh, and so everything mm -hmm. worked out just great. We got basically all the things we wanted to do done. We were without power at our Airbnb for about a day and a half because a tree fell on the power lines that was exciting but being a gadget person you must have had plenty of backups Batteries. yes oh, yes okay the only issue we had was a friend had a pixel a google pixel which uses the usb type c charger and gosh darn it if that is not a hard cable to find because we only had a type c to type c cable and we needed a type a just the normal usb plug to type c yep. It was impossible to find anywhere, so he was the only one who was running low on charge. Because he should have watched the Gizwiz when I talked about the three little conversion caps for like nine dollars. I carried on my keychain. Yeah. Because because I have the uh, LG uh, G6, which is USB C. And you know, you can go anywhere and say, do you have a USB micro? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, they don't exactly. have, a, as you found out, you, they don't have None. a C. No. So I just carry that little one-inch cap on my keychain, and it just clicks right on. Yeah, it's And uh, it's set to go. Yeah, yeah. I, the iPhone announcement uh, happened, and I was crossing my fingers that the Did iPhone... Did you be first in line? <laughs> No, no. Uh, in fact, I've waited months to, to get my current iPhone. Um, but that uh, they would switch to Type-C. Because if Apple switches to USB Type-C, every corner store in America is going to have yes. 17 yes. different types of cables to fit the, uh, the iPhone. Unfortunately, they stuck with Lightning. Very frustrating. Very frustrating. So... Stuck with lightning on the uh, the iPhone. Did you see the uh, the iPhone announcement? Have you heard? No, about you know what? I'm just an Android person, and I figure this is one less thing I have to worry about. I mean, I I, I just uh, you know read some of the reviews of, and I'm also thinking, boy, they're really forcing the price of phones up yeah. and up and up. Yeah, a thousand, a thousand bucks dollars. for the basic. Yeah, and and here in New York City, the uh, Sales tax is almost nine percent, so you got to <laughs> throw on a throw lot. Throwing an extra more. hundred bucks just for that sales yeah. tax. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. definitely. Um, and it's also it's so funny because you know normally they do a version and then an S version. So there's yes. the six and then the six S. Well, we're at the seven now. There's no seven S. There's an eight, which is basically the seven S, and then there's a ten, an iPhone ten, or as it's shown on. Advertisements, the iPhone X, and yes. that is supposed to be a different phone. So that's how they got away with raising the price so much. Is yeah, you could still buy a normal iPhone. Oh, for yes, the same oh yeah, exactly. Nobody but wants to buy that be... thing. Everybody wants to get the crazy X. Yeah, phone. exactly. Everybody wants to be able to show. But you know what? It's interesting is years ago when you got a new phone, it, it'll probably happen with the X. But I noticed the past at least three years. When you take out a phone, no one says, what phone is that? Yeah. I, you oh, know? Yeah. And now they'll probably say, oh, is that the X? Or yeah. knowing if you bought one, when you take it out, you will announce, oh, I am taking out my 10. <laughs> well, I can take a photo X. of that with this fantastic portrait mode, a depth <laughs> effect that's in my iPhone X. Yeah, it's, it's true yeah. that I have a wider range flash. Let me just unlock my phone with Face ID. <clears throat> One here. Well, it's already done. Sorry. I didn't even notice. So fast. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, work it in like that in a very <laughs> natural, casual kind of way. I know. It's so funny. Device envy has, has almost gone away because there are so many devices you never know 
what anyone has in their hand. They could have the fanciest device ever, but it looks so similar and there's so many, it's hard to know. I remember that with the yeah. Na iPod Nano. That, I remember seeing the first iPod Nano in the, war in the wild. It just be, <laughs> it's so small, oh my gosh. How on yes. earth is there electronics in that? Um, so yeah, we've come a long yeah. way, I feel like. Yeah, and also now pretty much everybody, at least if you're a gadget fan, your friends are usually gadget fans. So everybody has that. Yeah. And also, if you have something really super, your friend may uh, make not fun even of you because it costs it. so much. <laughs> yes, yes, or, or not acknowledge it. <laughs> exactly. Like, oh, oh, oh okay. that's the ten. Oh, yeah. I thought it'd be something special. Yeah, I'm. I'm really curious to see. You know, if you're an iPhone user, what is the percent of the iPhone users that are going to go for the eight versus the more expensive X? Because most people are now on a, a pay-as-you-go yes. plan where, where it's built into a monthly cost. So if you buy a $1,000 phone versus an $800 phone, you'll see that increase in that monthly, it'll just be a smaller increase. But they're still going to see it. So I'm very interested to find out how many people are going to shell out the extra money for the X versus the 8 and be happy with the 8. Um, yeah, I don't, I'm very interested to find out that. Hey, uh, well, let's, uh, I guess, jump into the show. Okay, well, all right, so there's a show in town, uh, a one-day show called uh, Family and Kids, the Family and Kids Tech Show, and it was a lot of tech stuff for kids that the parents will have to buy for them. Uh, so let's meet, uh, we're going to do three this week and three next week. The uh, first one is Remy the Smart clock and here it is Dickie Bartolo man's mad is dry there and the Gizwiz one take theater here at gizwiz.tv actually we're at the uh, kids and adult tech expo we're talking to Catherine and she's going to tell us about Remy is it Remy right Remy, Remy uh, the clock that teaches kids how to sleep better exactly Remy is far more than a clock. It's really a sleep companion that gathers in only in one object all what you need as a parent to take good care of your kid's sleep from birth to, let's say, 10. So how does it work? First, for babies, it's a baby monitor, a regular connected baby monitor. So you need only one device in your kid's room. Is there a camera in there? No camera. Audio. Oh, audio. Audio. And it's a walkie-talkie. So you can also talk to the baby from your smartphone. And it's also a nightlight and can play lullabies. But what is pretty unique with Remy is that it also monitors night after night the sleep quality of your kids by monitoring sound, light, and temperature in your kid's room so that you have a pretty good understanding of the trends going on with your baby's sleep. You mean this can figure out from the sounds the child is making yeah, because their sleep pattern? Exactly, because when a child, when a baby wakes up at night, what does he do? He cries because he needs something, right? So only with the sound, you have a pretty good understanding of how many times he woke up during the night. Is this figure evolving in the right direction because you have all the past history in the application? So it's not a health product. It's not intrusive. There's nothing in the crib. It's only in the bedroom. But it gives you a pretty good understanding of the sleep of your baby and the way it is evolving. Okay, and now, now the age group you said from baby to about what age? About uh, two, probably about 10, because then the next challenge that they face when they grow up, when they get to toddlers, is that they don't have the time concept yet, right? They can't read time. And that's why they pop up in your bedroom on Sundays at 6 a.m., right? They, that's not to bother you, it's just they don't know time. So with the different expressions of Raimi faces, you can very easily tell them when Raimi is sleeping, it's it's time to stay in bed. It's not time. So he to he, to he has a sleeping face. Exactly. This is the sleeping face of Remy. And here, for instance, Remy is awake. So this is not time to wake up yet. And this is time to wake up. You can go and see mom and dad. And with the application, it's very, very easy to set up as many scenarios as you want for any weekday or weekend, school days, holidays, and so on. And so you can start learning, teaching sleep routines to your kids, thanks to that, which is okay. essential to sleep quality. 
Very good. Now, at last, it's, um, at last, it's a music player, so you can either embed music in it and play it directly. There is a play button here, oh, okay. or you can stream music. It's a Bluetooth speaker, so you can also use it as a Bluetooth speaker. Very good. And the price point? Price point is 99 US dollars. 99? 99. 99. And is it out now or coming? It's coming. It's right now flying from Hong Kong to Los Angeles. So it will be available within a week or two. Okay. And you have a website? Yes. Urbanalo.com. We'll super that on the screen also. I like this. Vic D. Bartolo, Mads Medis, writer, and the Gizwiz. One take theater here at gizwiz.tv. Bye. So I may have, like, is the face supposed to help the child or the parent? The, the face, uh, you teach the, so, so the clock would be in the kid's room. Right. And you teach the kid that when the clock has its eyes closed, right. mommy asleep. and daddy are sleeping. Right. Okay. okay. And, 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 you, and you can set that for every day so that on weekends, the clock doesn't have a awake face until whatever, you know, 10 a.m. Right. Right. And in and in theory, the child will look at the clock and say, and no. "Well, I guess yeah, that's, a, that's I guess a good I'll, way. That's a yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, teach yeah. the child to yeah. teach itself that check with the clock. Is the clock asleep? Yeah, a, a, exactly. Hey, asleep. I, I'm not sure how in the world it can figure out the child's sleeping habits, not having anything connected to the bed. Um, no, now I I mean I it, for a long time there was a a base station for my iPad that I used that used uh, sound and actually radar. It would shoot radar <laughs> at my bed to see my chest rising and falling. To, but I don't think this is. But I'm, what I'm saying is there may be some type of technology oh, oh, maybe. built okay. in. Could be sound even. You know, just knowing movement is happening when you m move over, um, or or breathing or something like that. So I'm not exactly certain, but. I have faith that it would work, that it would work just fine. <laughs> okay, good, what, good. what I'm trying to yeah, say. Yeah. Well, certainly, I certainly understand the face thing, and that seems to be pretty clever. Yeah. And uh, it's iOS and it's Android. And on their website, it still shows it in um, – the lady is from France. So I don't even see a U.S. dollar price yet. But as she said, it was flying uh, as we speak – yeah, and it's showing uh, ninety nine or eighty nine euros, I believe. Euros, yeah, yeah, believe. yeah, yeah. yeah. Bad, bad at currency number or symbols. Anyway. I don't, I never know. Uh, um, but so available in the states shortly, according to uh, our spokesperson. Awesome. Uh, that is Remy. Available at urbanhello dot com. Com. Now the second one is. Sort of bizarre to my mind, but their goal, which you'll hear about at the end, is really a great thing. So <laughs> let's learn about Galulu, the child's smart water bottle. At least it's fun to say. Yes, yeah, it's Galulu. Hey, Dick D. Bartolo, Mads Mattis, writer, and the Gizwiz, One Take Theater here at gizwiz.tv. We're at the Family and Kid Expo, the Tech Expo. Actually, I looked on my badge. I'm registered as a kid. Well, that's okay. So we're walking around, and uh, I met Ossie. Ossie? Yes. Right. And he has a Gulu. automated... Say the name? Gululu. Gululu water bottle and with a video screen and and what is this bottle for so this is the gululu interactive water bottle and the water bottle encourages children to drink water from a young age and teach them a healthy habit and the way it does it is like a tamagotchi animated pet that the child chooses and then while the child is drinking water the game develops and he earns treasures and prizes and different levels. And all this while the parents are updated on an app. So the parents can see how much a child is actually drinking. Oh, okay. Uh, is there a way to tell if the child has replaced the water with vodka? Uh, <laughs> that's a good question. No, there is no way to tell. <laughs> okay, <laughs> very good. Uh, now, uh, is there sound too or is it just all yes. visual? There's sound, there's all sorts of interaction with the pet. So the more you drink, okay, if 
if you start to drink properly, the pet will start to react to the sensors that are on the side of the bottle. So for example, if I show you this, you see it goes up when I do that, right? Now, if I keep drinking, it's gonna do a lot of other things. And when it goes up, it makes a sound. And I don't wanna reveal, but I can tell you that it's going to become more and more interactive. Right now it's in 3D, but soon it'll do more than that. Okay. Uh, now, is the child wearing headphones? Or I know it's very loud in here. No, so there's a, a built-in speaker? There's a speaker, yes. Okay. And when is this available and how much is it? It costs $129. It's available on mygulu.com, M-Y-G-U-L-U-L-U.com. And we're also available on Amazon exclusives. Oh, okay. And it's out now? Yes. Okay, that's very... Oh, and you recharge it by putting it... Charge it on a wireless charging dock, and it connects to the Wi-Fi, automatically updates all the content. Every two weeks, we add more features, so it doesn't stop. The kid, all the time, gets to continue the game and, you know, by that, develop that healthy habit of drinking water. And by the way, I just want to add two quick things. One is that half the kids in America are not drinking enough water. Okay. And 25% of them develop sugar-related diseases because of soda and sugary drinks. So we're fighting that. And the other thing is that we're also providing water. For every bottle that we sell, we provide water for life to a child in a developing country. And we do that by building water wells in developing countries next to schools so that children that didn't have access to clean water before now have access to clean water. So when you purchase a Galulu bottle, you're actually also giving water for life to a child in a developing country. Uh, I think that's uh, a great objective. I like that a lot. Dick D. Bartolo, Mads Madness writer, and the Gizwiz. One take it here at gizwiz.tv. Uh, this it's, it's cool. I, I'm, it, it, it's right in the muddy middle for me. Of, it seems like it has all the things that you'd want. It's technology, it's health, it is interactive, the battery, you know, every two weeks, it's great that, it, you know, you don't have to do it all that often. Um, it's for a good cause. They're doing stuff, you know, after you buy it, you're, there's, but at the same time, it just, it just almost just feels like work and will the child really, you know, bond with the bottle to want to drink more? It seems... Uh, it's, you know, the I know. Price I, I, is really expensive. One hundred and thirty dollars. Yes, it's like, yes. Oh, man, it seems it's right in the middle where it's almost too. It's cool and it's great and it's wonderful, but it's also too expensive and I don't know if it's gonna work. And what if the kid just pours water out just to get the animation that? Oh, they oh that's interesting. You know, like well, well, that's a. <sighs> You little devil. You were a little devil. I a little need, devil right. child. You need devil to keep child. watching me when I was young, definitely. Yeah, no, it's almost like it would be good if you could take uh, half the price of it off as a tax deduction. <laughs> right. Because if they if they built a well in a third world country next to a school for every one of those Galulus that they sold, that yeah. would be an amazing thing. Yeah. Uh I'm helping. So, yeah, this is this is for a nonprofit, right? Let's. Yes, it's it's this. for a nonprofit. You know? they, I I I've gotten the name of the company that they've uh, partnered with. Yeah, uh, J, J, it's called Generosity.org. Is That's is great. a company that they've uh, premiered with. Let me just uh, end that. Um, yeah, it is. It, it's interesting, and at, at the same time, it is expensive. Yeah, exactly. So, well, I, I thought it's sort of fun to do these things to get people's reaction and also right. just to let people know the kind of thing that's out there. Yeah. yeah, I'm afraid that it's one of those things that's cool. And everyone says, oh, that's really cool. But I, but I just don't see it taking off. You know, I don't see it really catching on is the is the worrisome part, you know. Yeah, I, if it, I almost wish it was part of something else. Um, you know, there, there are a lot of single things, you know, like the, the fork that vibrates if you're eating too fast, if they had some sort of a, a smart kit where for a hundred dollars, you got a fork that told you you're eating too fast and a water bottle that said you're not drinking enough. Right. And, but this one item 
I, I think you're right. I, I think it's going to be a hard sell yeah. at 130 bucks. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's, that's kind of how I feel. Is yeah. uh, I, there's probably a you know parent out there that'll buy it, but the the person who just spent a thousand dollars on their iPhone. <laughs> exactly. It's, exactly. You Why know, not? hey dad, the iPhone was a thousand dollars. How about buying the kid something? Right. Yeah. Exactly. Perfect. Okay. Next. Okay, so uh, a couple of years ago, we talked about Keno. They make these uh, computers that you can put the kids put together, and they were introducing a new thing, uh, the Pixel Kit, which I think is great fun. So let's watch that. Hey, Dick Bartolo, Mads, Maddest Writer, and the Gizwiz. One take theater here at gizwiz.tv, still at the Kids Adults Tech Expo. We're talking about Cano. Now, we saw this at Toy Fair. This is really neat. This is a way for a kid to build their own computer. This is the kit finished. Comes, it comes with the keyboard. Uh, and that's $149. But we're going to find out new things like this, for example. Uh, the Pixel Kit I don't know about. And so your name, sir, is? Jamie. Hey, Jamie, what is the Pixel Kit? So the Pixel Kit is like a light bright for kids, like a 2007 version of a light bright. It retails for $79. And through a picture book, you learn to assemble a screen with various pixels and then plug it in and connect to Cano World, their educational platform that then teaches you how to build games and art and through various challenges of learning how to code. Can you do sil silly things like just write your name on it? Yes. Light. Yes. Okay, great. Uh, can you turn it on? Uh, is anything in there now programmed? No. No. Okay. You'll have to come back for that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> they have to get a seven-year-old to uh, program. All right. So uh, Jamie's going to plug it in. And oh, oh, oh. We'll have to go chase that down. Something uh, fell okay, off the Okay. There table. we go. Oh, wow. Okay. Now, and, and can you adjust the intensity of that also? Yeah. All through the platform, you uh, can code the various colors of each pixel and what you would like for them to do. And then how many different screens can you save? You can uh, save unlimited versions of like artwork or various types of screens with colors. This is a bad version because it's totally cleared, but we can set something up for you guys to see of a version of it. Uh, okay, and, and can you actually make something that would end up being animated? Yes. You can make the game Snake or a variety of different games that you want or have it so your name goes across or the time goes across. I like that. Now, the original kit is 149 so you need the original kit. No, you do not need the original kit. The Pixel kit, which retails for $79, can be plugged into just a regular computer and then through the Cano app, Windows or Mac compatible, you're able to program it. Oh, great. So I just have it plugged in for the sake of simplicity here. Oh, okay. Uh, that's pretty neat. 79 bucks. I like that. Dick D. Bartolo, Maz Medist Writer, and the Gizwiz. One take theater here at gizwiz.tv. Somehow, like bugs, I am drawn to the light. <laughs> I, I need love to this. see my name in that someday. <laughs> Bye. I love this. Any Anything oh. that teaches kids how to code, how to get into this, how to you know, take away a lot of the fear of electronics that they're just so complicated you could never figure it out for yourself, anything like that. I am all on board. And this, you know, early on, maybe when, you know, when I was growing up, the only thing was Lego Mindstorms. You know, you could kind of yes. get into that just a little bit. But these uncomplicated platforms to dive into, inexpensive at $80. I mean, it's, you know, $80, but still for a fully built, you know, product that your kids could play with, I think that's very competitive, very good. Um, and, you know, I wanted to, uh, it was sort of strange. I thought, why did they send this guy out with just a white <laughs> pixel kit? <laughs> Right. So they, they have a little 90 second commercial. If you just, I, I, the, yeah, they should have had this video running at the booth, which, but they didn't. So this is, this is what it can do.
So it looks like they're uh, programming games. Uh, there's a you know instruction book booklet and the batteries and how to put everything the, together. The, there's a, a microphone so it can react when you talk. Oh wow! And so they're they're putting in simple uh, you know code blocklets almost to exactly. create exactly. So yeah, their yeah. Code. So you don't know exactly, and that sends it to the pixel. And uh, the people, the, you know, the kids are writing their names, making characters. Creative side, and the analytical side, it uses everything. They love seeing something in the physical world that they did. It lights them up. But I just really like at the end when it all comes together and you get to see what it can do and stuff like that and all that hard work finally put into action. It really gives me a big sense of pride. I could connect a microphone and it can create a visualization of the music <laughs> that is being played. Lights. Color, chippy. Yeah, I mean, the, it, it's fun, it's, isn't it? Yeah, yeah we can, uh, it really does seem yeah. uh, pretty cool. I mean, it does quite a lot and is, you know, geared for kids, good for kids to yeah. learn and, and, you know, just mess around. It's always great to have a kind of a play area when it comes to programming where if they mess up, it's fine. It's not gonna. Exactly. It's not, it's exactly. not gonna break the device. You know, you can try something that didn't work. Oh, uh, now I understand. Okay, I have to put it this way. Okay. Oh, I want this to repeat. Okay, let's try a loop. Let's see yeah, what that does. Yeah, it's super. And if you mess up, so the thing looks a little weird, and you go, "Well, that didn't come out exactly what I wanted." Let me go back. Exactly. And I love the little talking thing where you make a <laughs> mouth, and then when you talk into the microphone, the mouth. Opens, opens up and to match your words it's it's very fun and like you said for 80 bucks it, it's really neat yeah i think that's it's perfect that's absolutely perfect um does it recommend an age you know i think it was uh i think he said five and up yeah mm, 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 mm. you know i don't an faq, FAQ. Da -da. Uh, he was not the most okay, knowledgeable right. person <laughs> <laughs> because I said, I said, you know, can I, can you uh, draw my logo? I said, it's just a circle and, and a big thing for a mustache. And he said, uh, uh, yeah. I said, and I'll come back like in 10 minutes. He said, oh, well, no, we couldn't do it today. Yeah. <laughs> I'm thinking, Wait a minute, what? It says, what is the recommended age for the Pixel Kit? We recommend six years old, uh, old as a starting point, but some children oh, okay. who can read and write may start earlier. Uh, it also suggests oh. ages six to eight would have adult supervision to, to make sure that they get the most out of uh, okay. the Pixel Kit. <laughs> Great. Yeah. I, I love it. You know, Christmas is just right around the corner. Make sure you yeah. bookmark this. Um, yeah, and any and any computer. That was a great thing. I th I yeah. thought it was Keno. It was in addition to their computer. So uh, hook it up to any uh, USB, uh, Android, uh, Android yeah. uh, PC or Mac. Yeah. And I'd also Perfect. say, I mean, don't, don't just stop at you know ten, eleven. I'm 28. What, what I feel are like you I kidding? Could learn, you know, I feel, I feel like I could learn something from this. This this looks so fun. Um, so I yeah. know. I wish I, I wish I uh, had the nerve to say, do you have one of those? Do you have yeah. a product sample? You, you guys I'm giving away samples I'm today? Play, yeah. We'll, we'll take one. Um, with <laughs> with that, uh, great gadgets, and we'll have three more gadgets next week. Um, from the same fair. So, but now, ladies and gentlemen, it means that we cannot stop it from happening. We're going to Chad's it's crappy, crappy corner. Get it? Okay. Uh, sorry that I had turned down all the volume because that uh, music was so loud on the video. Oh, okay. uh, and I forgot to turn it back up. Um, so this month is the patrons' suggestions. Um, gadgets from you that you guys suggested. Uh, if you're a patron, instead of the normal poll, there is a Google form that you can fill out and give me a link or an idea or a suggestion for a gadget to check out. Please, by the way, this is, uh, is kind of cool because all month you can still continue to submit ideas and I will still go buy them. So uh, if you are a patron, please head on over to patreon.com slash gizwiz and submit more ideas. About a week and a half ago, I did something for the first time that I was made fun of quite a lot. 
Um, I boiled my first egg for the first time. I made hard boiled eggs um, and they came out perfectly and I loved it. And some, one of the patrons must have seen that tweet uh, because they suggested that I get the exact egg timer. Uh, this timer you put into the water with the egg and you can see inside of the gadget how done your egg is. So earlier today I recorded a video mm. of me testing it out. So let's head to me from the past. Hey Dicky D, so we're here with the Eggtastic Egg Timer. This is a device that will help you get perfectly made hard boiled eggs. Uh, it's pretty simple. Hopefully it will be simple to unpackage. I keep calling it the Eggtastic. It's the exact egg exact. timer. Oh, that's a good name for it actually. There we go. Okay, so this is the Eggtastic, egg, egg, exact, sorry. Did I call it Eggtastic before? Exact egg timer. The idea is that this will change colors uh, with your eggs so that you know exactly how hard, hard or soft the middle of the egg is. And it suggests that you just place it in the water while the water still isn't boiling hot. Now I already started my water, so I'm gonna use a spoon just to kind of uh, plop my eggs in. But you put the eggs in at the same time that you put the timer in. There we go, so let's add a few more eggs. And we'll take uh, some eggs out when it says that they are um, soft, and then we'll take some out when it says that they're medium, and we'll take some out when it says that it is hard. So we'll be right back. Okay, so the instructions are kind of are not clear because it says that they're soft in between the soft mark and the first edge, and it's medium just right after the soft, and then it's hard, not quite, I'm confused. So uh, we're right, we're just right at the soft mark in the, uh, the exact timer. So we're gonna go ahead and pull one out to see exactly where it's gonna be. I'm going to use the marks on the timer itself. Hopefully we won't drop this egg and uh, see where this one turns out. Uh, we'll be back once this egg cools. I'm gonna move the soft boiled egg over to this cup. We'll open that in just a bit. We are at medium right now, so we'll pull one out and put that into the ice bath. Ooh, that's hot. Okay, the medium one is done and it has just gotten to the hard. You might be able to see Ooh, a little that's bit that's the easiest one in to there. see. Yeah. This is like Perfect timing, and we'll move this over to the bath. Once this one cools off, we'll crack each one open. The cracking process may take a little while, so I'll do that off camera. Okay, so we have finally peeled the eggs, and this first one is the soft boiled egg. Very, very soft. So let's go ahead and cut into this. Looks good, that looks perfect. That is the perfect. Sorry, my tile. Oh, went the off. it's an electronic. Uh, this egg. is, I'd <laughs> say, the perfect soft boiled so my egg. Tile. You have a little bit of uh, hardness right there in the yolk up there, but everything else is pretty much perfectly soft. So, I would say, just about perfect for the soft boiled egg. Now, medium. Now, everyone does their eggs differently. So, you know, me saying that it's perfect may be uh, wrong on other people's accounts. Okay. I would say that this would just this would be hard boiled. To me, this is a hard boiled egg. Uh, if the there's a little itty bitty bit of softness in the middle, you can kind of see that right in there, just the tiniest amount. But to me, that would be a hard boiled egg. And then this was fully in the middle of the exact, and that is that is also a hard boiled egg to me. Now this is I would say a little bit. Uh, they're about the same in terms of uh, dryness level. Maybe this is a little bit softer. So, soft boiled egg, perfect in my opinion. Medium would need to be before and hard is uh, still just the hard boiled egg from, from before. I'd say this was a little bit more crumbly. But that is the 
exact egg timer from Amazon. So a few things also, uh, the instructions after actually reading the words on the instructions, it does say, since everyone has a different idea of how a cooked soft, medium or hard egg is, you may need to experiment with some of the times in order to get your perfect spot for the egg. So I think that's okay. why it was kind of showing the, the times not exact to the markings on the exact timer. Um, I was pretty impressed with it. I think it's pretty great. It's so simple. The, 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 the color changing, I was worried that it was going to be a little bit too subtle for me to notice, but it seems like it worked out just fine. I was able, you know, it turned dark enough for me to really know where that uh, was. And the, it, it looks almost distorted kind of in person because of just how the, uh, the, the glass is, it's almost hard to read the, um, the, the, the things here. Let me just kind of show that off. You can see hard, medium, and soft is just kind of have, has fallen off of the egg edge. And I was actually really worried about that before I put it in the water. But once I put it in the water, I realized that that doesn't matter because the water kind of makes all this smooth and that distortion goes away. So you're oh, able to okay. read the soft there um, much easier. Um, I'm, I would use this. I would use this all the time. Also, yeah. <laughs> the price is very, very nice. It was uh, only $5.99 on Amazon. And you can also find it around in different places too. Bed Bath & Beyond carries it. Um, so it's, it's not a difficult thing to find. So I was, I was, I was impressed. I like it. Yeah. Oh, it got a uh, great reviews. Yeah, fantastic reviews. And this is also, you know, what I was doing before to get my hard boiled eggs was I was bringing, I would, you know, I read some blog post online. You put the eggs in with the lukewarm, with the, you know, just normal tap water. You bring it up to a boil. Once it hits its boiling, you turn it off and you cover the eggs and you wait seven and a half minutes. And then you pull the eggs out and do it in a, cold water bath and that lasts for 20 minutes and so instead of <laughs> you know setting multiple timers on your echo and you know all that whole process it makes it so much easier just to drop this in with the eggs just keep an eye on it and then pull them out when when you've hit the mark um and you don't you don't have to you know keeping you still have to keep track and watch where the uh, exact timer is but you don't have to do all the other stuff to try to get the perfect type of egg. So I'd say- Can't, can't you just say, Alexa, tell me when this is medium hard boiled? <laughs> you'd hope, you'd hope. And yeah, see, that's I what the blog that. post was kind of doing was, okay, you do this and you get it to this exact oh, uh, level, mm. but that normally takes, you know, two minutes and oh 37 seconds. So oh make sure, God. you know, it's just like, uh, oh my gosh. <laughs> so. Uh, the exact egg timer made in the USA, only $5.99. Does it come, can you wear it as a locket? What, what is that <laughs> thing on top of the... I do not understand. The packaging has, oh, I guess that's a clock. Oh, oh, that's oh a it's clock. a clock. I agree. It looks oh, like some I... old-timey radio, you know, antenna. Yeah, I wasn't sure if an antenna or uh, you could wear it as a locket. It looks like it, they... <laughs> Cut off part of the chain. I agree. I I get it now. Yeah, um, it's a clock. So I I really really enjoyed it. Um, and the color, the thing that I was most worried about was uh, being able to tell the color difference, and it was fine. I think it, it'd be fine for everyone. So thank you so much uh, to the patron who submitted that gadget. But remember, you can still submit your gadgets at Patreon.com/slash/Gizwiz. With that, let's move on to Dick's Gadget Warehouse. They're geeky and they're goofy. Together they are loopy. When gadgets pass away, he takes them out to play. In Dick's Gadget Warehouse. For the horn. And we can go right into the video. It's all in there. It's in there. It's in there. Hey, Dick D. Bartolo, Mads Maddest writer, and the Gizwiz 
One Take Theater here at gizwiz.tv. It's back to Dick's Gadget Warehouse for Cell Boost. Who remembers Cell Boost? So it was CES either 2003 or 2004 when Cell Boost was introduced. It was a mega hit among all the reporters at CES because it was like the first way for you to charge your phone if you were away from AC power, okay? I'm going to open Cell Boost and show it to you. It was fairly tiny and uh, and hard to get out of the <laughs> as hard to get out of the package today as it was back then. Uh, you know what? I'm actually going to leave it in the package uh, because it's sort of fun to have it in the original packaging. So it's about the size of a cigarette lighter. And they had to make every conceivable version because each one, each cell boost was made for a specific phone. See that weird connector up at the top there? That was for the, let me take a quick look here. I think it was the Motorola. Yeah, it was the Motorola. And it was 60 minutes of talk time. I love on the back that it says, use it over and over and over again until you run out of power. Uh, all right, so they were five or six bucks. They were phone specific. And the object was you could use it to recharge your phone. Better way to use this was to plug it into your phone, use it to make an important phone call and then unplug it and save it again for an emergency and really charge your phone back uh, at the hotel or when you got home or when you were near power. So I looked on Amazon to see if they were still around. Well, believe it or not, you can still buy a few of them. Cell Boost for Nintendo DS5. T take a look at this. Cell Boost disposable battery for dockable iPods for seventeen fifty, that could give you up to eight hours of play time. So a little more than two bucks an hour. Uh, another cell phone, uh, another cell boost for Nintendo, thirty-five dollars. Uh, Motorola V series. Uh, you know, also these. Let's see, twenty. Even if it was twenty fourteen, these are thirteen years old. So I don't know what the battery composition was and if, if they still have any power just sitting on the shelf. And this is my favorite right here. Fortunately, um, I don't see a place to buy it. Okay, cell boost disposable <laughs> battery for the PSP. Um, $987. <laughs> okay. There's even one for uh, 34 cents used. <laughs> anyway. Uh, it was technology at its finest some 12 to 14 years ago. And today, it's just a package on the Gizwiz Gadget Warehouse shelf. Dickie Bartola, Man's Man Destroyer, and the Gizwiz One Take Theater here at gizwiz.tv. Bye! <laughs> That really is the perfect Gizwiz gadget warehouse. A gadget yeah, that is the, so the, obsolete that <laughs> we have a way better option, a way better solution. Did you even know about them? I never heard of no. it. No. Oh, okay, okay. And yeah, it just seems uh, like such a waste nowadays because you. Oh, you're so, absolutely. You're so used to, first off, you're used to recharging your phone every night, you know? Right. Uh, and, you know, back then it was. It was, you know, you'd have a cell phone and it might be weeks between recharging your cell yes, phone. Yes, 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 you're exactly it. right. And also, as I recall, they didn't lock in like, like you put in a micro USB and you lay it on the counter. You sort of held them together like that in, while you made your call. Uh, uh, I mean, back then it was something because there was nothing really portable. So it was a big hit. And, and I, I think for two or three years... They, I think it started out actually, I believe the first one could charge your phone for 40 minutes. And then the next CES, they had it up to 60 minutes. 
Um, so it was useful for its time. But uh, as you said, I mean, nowadays for 10 bucks, you can get a, uh, a like a 5,000 milliamp thing yeah. that you can throw in your pocket and recharge hundreds of times. Yeah, absolutely. I so, mean, it, it, yeah. Yeah, you can buy them at almost every gas station. I saw something, yeah. I have seen these before, but it was the first time I ever actually used one when I was at the World of Coke in Atlanta. They had uh, a little, um, I don't want to say kiosk, that makes it sound too official. It was just a, a, like a, a, a thing that you would slide your credit card in and it would open up a door and you could put your phone in and plug it in to, uh, in, into the, the uh, charger and so you could charge it. And my impression of those had always been that they were for money, that you would pay $5 and charge your phone. But this was actually completely free. You would slide in your credit card and that was your, your basically your passcode to oh. unlock the door so you would oh, so, slide. so you, you 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 put your phone in there and left it and, and the door locked it. again exactly so when we were oh. at the world of coke and we all needed to charge our phones because the power was out back at the airbnb oh, 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 right. yeah you would just go up slide your card a door would open it had usb-c micro usb uh lightning and 30 pin and you would plug in whatever device you, you know, what your device, put it back in the door and close the door. And a little light would turn on showing that that one was in use. So you could easily see, you know, this one was free. This one isn't free. There was about six drawers. And they had these set up all over the world of Coke. And so you could just, uh, you know, walk around, see the exhibit. And right before you leave, go back, slide your card. And it, it was, it was basically, you know, you, you see at the airport, a charging station that's set up, but you always have to sit there and babysit your phone. And this, it would keep your phone in a secure little locked drawer until you came yeah, by. Yeah, that is that is very up. clever. Yeah. yeah. I, I think I saw something like that at a franchising show. And I, I guess the thing is that Coke is doing it like as a, an extra bonus for you going there. Yeah, exactly. And, but, it, it, but if you wanted, you could have it wired so that you're, credit card would indeed be charged something yeah exactly. uh, but it's a great idea that you don't have to sit there and keep your eye on your phone yeah. that's really great yeah that's i was great. really impressed and i what's funny is i i, I think i've seen these around too is i i've se i've seen these around but i always saw the credit card slot and thought okay well this is going to cost money but we were so desperate to charge our phones, <laughs> we finally went over to it and said, I'll, whatever it costs, I'll pay it to charge my phone. <laughs> As we're going through the process, we're, we read, oh, it's free. Oh, this is just your credit card. It's just your, your passcode. Um, I thought it was great. I thought it was absolutely yeah, fantastic. No, it's great. Actually, it's put in by two guys who were just collecting uh, credit <laughs> card numbers. They, that does Coke, run through your Coke, mind. It's <laughs> yeah. Co Coke doesn't even know that they're on those shelves. Exactly. Yeah. Like, could, couldn't there be a different way to secure this? Couldn't I use a <laughs> PIN code, wouldn't you think? Um, but I thought it was great. So. Oh, it's clever. Very clever. Yeah. It's so funny how far we've come from a product that is meant to be a disposable battery, just like your double A's to charge yep. a cell phone, to everyone just laughing their heads off. Why wouldn't you <laughs> use a rechargeable device? Oh my gosh. Um, perfect Gizwiz gadget crappy, or sorry, uh, 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 gadget warehouse. Um, with that, uh, I want to oh, make sure to send in your own gadget warehouse videos. Exactly. We need more videos, okay? Um, anything that involves a gadget. Uh, your favorite gadget, your worst gadget, a piece of crap, something you bought for a buck and think it's one wonderful. Uh, make a little video with your smartphone, uh, horizontal uh, plane. And as long as we can see the gadget and hear your voice, that's pretty much the requirements here. Uh, put it on YouTube. There's a drop-down menu. You can put uh, unlisted. Don't click private because then no one can see it. Uh, click unlisted. Send us the URL. And it goes to mail at gizwiz.tv. And it can be as short as a minute and as long as three minutes. And it should just involve a gadget. If you live in U.S. or Canada and we show you video, you get the current issue of MAD and a 35-year-old Alfred E. Newman picture. And if you live outside those two places, uh, we will heap praise upon you. And you can claim 
my video was on the Gizwiz show. And with that, let's jump into the letters. Become the letters. Your lovely letters. Become the Gizwiz letters now. Ah. Ah. A uh, letter is from Raul, W-O-R-O-W-E-L, Cardenas, C-A-R-D-E-N-A-S. Dick, I found something that you, as a rail fan enthusiast, may like, even though I'm not entirely sure it's Gizwiz worthy yet, but it is, because this is pretty neat. It's from Archie McPhee, that uh, gadget lovers know about. And it is the world's smallest model train. So let's take a peek at what it looks like. Oh, my gosh. It's adorable. <laughs> it's like credit card sized. Yeah, I, I wish it were less expensive. I, I mean, it is, it is probably the size of an index card, right? Like yeah, about three, three by five. In, yeah. And... Um, Oh, the guy showing his hand, his hand for scale. And then in his other hand, oh, he has nothing in his other hand. Um, He's oh, this is from the Museum of Working Miniatures. Okay. Here, we'll skip through this. There you go. Yeah. There's a, one of the train. It's on his index finger. It's itty bitty. Okay, let's skip ahead here. So it looks that's like it's the almost bottom. like an Arduino board. It looks like like one of those electronic Raspberry Pi boards almost. Yeah, I, I, the, the thing is, I realized after watching this, is that the trains are really not powered, but they're just magnetic. Oh. So they are being driven by something like under the, the board. Track. Oh, interesting. That, that is on the track. So, uh, I mean, if you're not watching, the locomotive is maybe an inch and a half long. Uh, it's AC powered, although I did look when I was looking up the price of it, which is 59 bucks. Uh, there is an option for another $11 where it can run from batteries. So it has a black locomotive and there's in one of the uh, pictures there's a, a little amount of detail actually even though this thing is tiny they're saying it's the smallest commercially available powered train in the world and then it comes with three little silver cars and you you just push them up against the locomotive nothing really couples to one another uh it's just the uh magnet sort of oh. keeps them in line with one another i was wondering because i was thinking you you're gonna need magnifying glass and a <laughs> yes, needle a needle and thread in order for that yeah, to yes, through. yes to keep these guys together um but it, it's an amazing gas i mean if this was 20 bucks i'd buy one just right. to have it on desk but not 60 bucks yeah okay. that kind of puts it outside of the realm of you know the gag christmas gift or yes exactly you know, yes yes yeah uh because yeah uh, if, I, if i had a family member who was into trains it would be perfect yeah. but more around that 30 dollar at maximum yeah 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 29.95 there you go right i mean uh, uh, it's it's a great little design for what it is. Um, and if you're interested, it's Archie McPhee sells it. And I think uh, Teeny Trains is uh, the company that puts it out. That's amazing. Uh, so, Raul, wow, uh, it is Gizwiz worthy uh, and very fascinating. I'm, I am <laughs> fascinated. That's just so cool. I, I, it make, it makes me want to... You know, look up other tiny things that are normally larger. You know, it's like <laughs> we've had the tiny drones and yes. the tiny race cars. And now well, well, he, uh, there was one of those videos was I think it's the the world of tiny gadgets or some, you, somebody yeah. can Google it. But it's kind of fun that there's a whole museum devoted to tiny uh, gadgets. I, tiny I love things. it. Love it. Raul, that's perfect. Perfect letter. Um, perfect. I want to give a big thank you to our patrons, patreon.com slash gizwiz. You guys make the show happen every week. If you enjoy the show, please consider 
uh, supporting at patreon.com slash gizwiz. It's a reoccurring support for every episode we put out. You guys uh, give back. If you don't want to do a reoccurring support, we uh, are happy to take a one-time donation at PayPal. You can go to gizwiz.tv, uh, click on the Patreon banner at the top of the website, scroll down and click on the PayPal link right there. Big thank you to everybody who yes. supports the show. And, and, it, and it could be 50 cents an episode. Yeah. 25 cents an episode. Yeah, we're not looking, yeah, it only has to be a dollar a month. Is ha we're yeah. so happy with. with we're not like gonna that. buy that teeny train set. <laughs> no, we're too cheap. <laughs> uh, also, you can check out Gizwiz.biz. We kind of have two sites going. Gizwiz.biz is run by Dickie D, and it has write-ups on all the gadgets that we cover on the show. Also, links to what the heck is it? The game show where you have to figure out what the heck this gadget is. Um, and I'll be honest, uh, this is, you've heard of, you know, wax lips. Well, uh, this is a wax toothbrush, um, for, you know, getting it, you know, just kind of make brushing your teeth a little bit fun. Um, I, I'm sorry that I spoiled the, the gadget, but if you think you know <laughs> what it is, you can guess over at gizwiz.biz. There's 12 Mad Magazines signed by Dickie D himself for correct answers, but double the Mad Magazines for hilarious, funny, clever, and interesting answers. So get a guessin' over at gizwiz.biz. The other website that we run is gizwiz.tv. At gizwiz.tv, you can catch the show live. A little bit of a programming note is we will be recording early this week on Monday. You can find out more uh, on that at the top of the website. If we're live, you'll see it, the live stream right there, and you can join the chat room right below it. You can also subscribe to the show, iTunes, HDSD Audio, and also on YouTube, so you never miss an episode of GizWiz. Uh, thanks so much for watching. And the meetup. Oh yes, the meetup. Uh, don't forget, we are having a GizWiz meetup on October 8th. October 8th. You can find out more by heading over to gizwiz.biz, clicking on Dick's log and blog, or yeah, blog and log. Sorry, I think, I've, matter. Always, Either way it'll... <laughs> I think I've always said yeah. that incorrectly. Um, it's on October 8th from 2 to 4 p.m. at the Boat Basin Cafe. If you would, it'd be great if we have a small idea of the people who will be attending. So you can RSVP uh, there by emailing Dickie D, just giving us an idea of how many people you think uh, you're going to be bringing. It'll be great. It'll, it's always perfect, fun. Perfect. We play games, perfect. we meet everyone, and uh, it'll be a fun time. And that's coming up on October 8th. With that, we will see you next week. I'll be here.